Welcome to the Abnormally Funny People Show, sponsored by Barclays. For further information, please visit abnormallyfunnypeople.com. We hope you enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the Abnormally Funny People podcast. I am Simon Minty. Hello and I'm Steve Best. How are you Mr Minty today? I'm very well, yourself? Yes, not so bad. Uh, I need to tell you, I got two emails after the last show. That's great. I was talking about uh, getting a bike, a, a tricycle, which I'd been trying out and, you know, it was a bit difficult and it wasn't quite working. But I've had a, an old friend who said, you know, him and his brother had made their own bike and they'd love to help me make one. What, a kind of Blue Peter moment? I think it would be sort of a bit more sturdy. Nice. Uh, but there was also this other thing called gyro bike, spelt with a J, and this is a battery-powered, rechargeable, motor-driven invention. And it's got a front a wheel, essentially, that works like a gyroscope and self-stabilises the bike. So I could get a two-wheeler bike, and this front wheel does all the balancing for me. That's amazing. So just on the one wheel, is it? Yes, yeah, so you, you can either buy the wheel on its own, or you can buy the whole bike with it. Uh, already incorporated. What about unicycles? So you could learn how to ride a unicycle without any any problems. Is that the way? Maybe, <laughs> although I've kind of jumped from a tricycle and I've skipped a two-wheeler and now I'm on a unicycle. I think I'm going to stick with a two, two-wheeler at the moment. That's good. So I, I like the idea so you can actually fix the wheel onto any bike. Yes. That's very good. It's yeah. amazing. Um, let's get on with the show. Uh, by the way, if you want to contact us, Go to our website, abnormallyfunnypeople.com, and there's all different methods that you can get hold of us. You can subscribe uh, and listen to the podcast there, and there's also a transcription of the show on the website. So, the guests on this week's show, Steve? Yes, our guests, both performers, both involved in comedy. Both disabled? That's the idea. Uh, There's Tanya Lee, a stand-up originally from Canada, now a US citizen and part of our original Edinburgh show in 2005. And she is, I would say, the busiest international comedian we know. She's always working, isn't she? Constantly. Absolutely. And Juliet Burton, um, who is a newcomer to Abnormally Funny People and cutting a swathe with her shows. Uh, I've seen those. We'll talk about those in a bit. Um, And they're going to speak to us next. Welcome to our guests on this month's Abnormally Funny People show. First up is Juliet Burton. Juliet's an award-winning actress, writer, performer and presenter and an ex-BBC broadcast journalist. She's had several shows in Edinburgh and beyond that focus on body image and her mental health. Welcome, Juliet. Hello. (laughs) How are you doing? Uh, Very well. You only just got here as well. You had a bit of a a problem getting here. Mm, I was. I did. I I came all the way down from Edinburgh today. That's a long way. To London for you guys just because I love you so much. That's nice. Yeah. And... We have Tanya Lee Davis. Yeah. Tanya Lee is a three, I was going to say six foot three, but it's three <laughs> foot six inch stand up comedian who headlines at comedy clubs and comedy festivals throughout North America, the UK, and the world. That's a big place, that. Mm. She's had a solo show for six months in Vegas. Tanya Lee is the Ferrari of comedy, low to the ground and Ooh. kind of racy. <laughs> That's on your website, Tanya Lee. Yeah. I, I know. Did you write that? Did you write that bit? A friend wrote it for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very good. Welcome. Hey. So we're going to kick off uh, with the moment of the month. So, Tanya mm. Lee, your moment of the month. Uh, well, my moment of I've, I have many, but uh, this one's been stuck in my head for the last little bit. Um, I went to a party recently with some friends, and it was, I was in North Carolina, where my boyfriend lives, and uh, my friends uh, were having a, a birthday party, and they had reserved the outdoor patio. And I went with my friend Vicky, and as we were walking in, uh, there were some people like uh, leaving a, a bike, two biker type dudes with their uh, biker bitch, I guess is what you would call her. <laughs> and uh, I was just, I was, I was walking forward. I, I was just kind of looking to where I would sit in the logistics because we were the first ones there. I was just standing there, and this woman goes, "Are you okay?" And I went. Yeah, does it look like I'm having a problem? And she went, no, but you're so cute. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> and I just kind of put my hand up and walked off. And she, but, but, but. but like, yeah. I, I get a bit of this. Was it cute because you're very beautiful? Or was it cute because you're cute and cuddly and like a teddy bear? I don't know. Just the way she did it was just like, oh, you're so cute. 
moon. I just wanted to go. Bleh. But you do you, you get that a bit though? Do you do you I, get that other times? Or was that? Well, no, no. I've been happening a lot lately. It must be my new hair. <laughs> You've got something in your hair at the moment. Yeah. Flowers. Well, I got That's flowers in my ears. The crazy. leaves blowing. It's in the wind. <laughs> You came by train as well, didn't you? Right, yeah, yeah. It's a good fashion. Yeah. <laughs> I know um, nothing about that. <laughs> but I am adorable. I mean, let's be honest here. I am pretty damn cute. But, I mean, when people come up and go, oh, you're so cute. It's well, that, that actually reminds of the story in the... Did you read that? The story in the paper this month that, that the guy, uh, uh, a small person with his fiance, who's average um, height, in a restaurant for a romantic meal... And this was very true. It was on the papers, and all people were talking about it. And he, by the, he was handed a children's coloring book and crayons <laughs> by the waitress. Oh no! This is true. It's true. But he actually was very cool about it, wasn't he? Yeah, you know? I, I kind of had some ab- admiration. I don't know how you would react to this, Tanya Lee, but you know, part of me, you want to throw the crayons and the coloring book back at them. Yeah. But then the flip side is, he, uh, but they obviously just want to laugh it off because it was a yeah. genuine mistake. And I presume, I mean, I had, years ago, remember crossing the road, the Holloway Road in London, and I had long hair then, I was a student, and I was waiting to cross, and then I felt this arm go around me and a sort of elderly gentleman say, it's all right, sweetie, I'll, I'll help you across the road. And oh. I turned around and looked at him with my beard and my furious face, and he went, oh! Oh, I am so sorry. But um, oh. how do you react when... I mean, we could still want to help you across the street even when... Oh, we realized... did. We held hands. Yeah, it was, saying, it was yeah. lovely. <laughs> lovely chat. Uh, thank you, Tanya Lee. We will come back to you in a moment. Uh, oh, did you have another one? Or was that just the one? I can't remember. No. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty dead. Well, thank, thanks for coming, Tanya Lee. It's been yeah, uh, really yeah. great. Uh, uh, Juliet, uh, your moment of the month. Okay. Um, I've had probably the weirdest month, like the busiest month, of my life and certainly with my career and I was going to say um that I got I went on ITV's this morning um which was interesting um it was good it was really 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 good um and it was it was wonderful but it kick-started this week of madness that actually led to me meeting your mate James Partridge yes, um who James. was not the only person I met at this amazing uh, body confidence award so you said in my lovely introduction thank you for that that I do shows that kind of have touched upon my mental health problems and um in my recent show I uh changed my look using lots of pr- uh, prosthetic makeup to uh, change the way I looked in lots of dramatic ways and Simon was interviewed for the show um anyway this this show called look at me um it's now led to this campaign called be real campaign uh, come up and approach me and say we want you to be um, an ambassador, a spokesperson for the campaign. And at the time, I was like, okay, so it, there's no money, but that's fine, that's good. You know, it's money's not the most important thing. It sounds like a really awesome campaign. Dove are involved, Twitter are involved, uh, loads of different places. The people, wonderful, wonderful organisations. I had no idea it was going to mean that I got to go to the House of Commons to wear a sparkly dress that was lent to me for the first time ever. Um, and, yeah, I've been lent fashion for the first time ever. Did you get asked, uh, who were you wearing? I didn't. I was totally prepared, though, as well. Um, but anyway, I looked fabulous, I was told. Uh, but not that appearances... It's not all about appearances. Where our value is much <laughs> you more... You body confidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was the first time I haven't worn a bra in ages, because I used to be very, very big, um, as you know, Simon. Um, I used to be size 20, and I used to be size 4 as well due to eating disorders. And my boobs... They don't stay upright without up. They don't stay up without a scaffolding around them. And this was the first time that I decided, well, do you know what? In the spirit of the awards, I'm going to wear the sparkliest dress. It's going to be backless and I'm going to let my boobs sag and that's fine. Um, and they, they looked all right. Um, Tanya Lee, body image, anxiety. You're constantly on stage. You constantly refer to your body. Um, well, when it comes to body image and stuff like that, I just... Uh... You know, I'm okay with it. I'm, you know, one of my things is uh, everybody can be sexy. You just got to work with what you got. And Hell yeah. Pull it out, whip it up, buff it, spray paint it orange. <laughs> <laughs> is that part of your new show? Many in, Geordies You've been do. to Newcastle, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scouse and Geordie. Okay, uh, so that was, uh, so Simon, what yes. about you? What, what's your moment of the month? You see, I've got lots of little bits and I don't know how many we'll get through in the time. I've just this morning had a hearing test. This is my second follow-up because uh, I know it's getting progressively worse. What? Ah, Hmm. Very good. Thanks to all our deaf listeners. I love that gag. Uh, <laughs> uh, the bit, I, again, it's back to when I'm doing public speaking. I can't, I, people speak and I don't know where it's come from and, and I don't really hear it. So I had the proper full hour today and it is proper. And I'm sort of mild, no, mild to moderate, I think, or maybe even a bit more than moderate. I suppose the, the, the point of it was he said, OK, we've got to talk about hearing aids and the different types. And I went to Boots, which is the, the chemist, the big sort of uh, chain in the UK. Um 
And they vary. I mean, there's some pretty fancy pants designs, and they vary from about £1,000. I was looking at up to about 3000 And then he put them in, and then he stood behind me, and he started talking, and he did the whole spiel. And it was remarkable. Everything was coming through. It, all it does is amplify it. It doesn't kind of find something new. It just amplifies it. Uh, and then he said, you know, you've had 47 years of uh, you losing your hearing. And I went, I heard that. It's 46, actually, uh, which was, <laughs> was a moment uh, of laughter. So, yes, I've just got to make a decision. Is that three? But is that to a bank per, manager. per ear? Three no, grand. it's for the set. For oh, a it's pair. for the set. Okay, because I remember Steve saying, because he's he's got some very expensive ones, hasn't he? Yes, and his is like four thousand pounds. <gasps> but he, yeah. each, I thought well, they were each as well. I think he does that for comedic effect. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Like Steve that. Day has bright red ones, and I always think he does that to really tell people. Yeah. If you see yeah. that, you're like, okay, there's a. The guy said to me, you can have this sort of sandy beige color, which is more skin color. Uh, or he said, you know, if you want hair colour, there's these grey ones. I thought, you're not really selling it to me, buddy. Uh, unbelievable. But it's a fashion accessory. Like, you're wearing glasses right now, and they're very fetching glasses as well. Um, but, yeah, the, you know, make it a fashion accessory. Just be proud and confident with it and go for it. Yeah, that's back to the body confidence bit. You know what? It's me using the scooter because... I've got to use them, and when I use them, it will be great, but there's just that little psychological leap where you've got to go, okay, this isn't working like it used to. I've got to start using this now. And that's a little bit... I've just got to get my head round. So do you well think that's an, an age thing when you're 47? 46, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think that's because of that? You're feeling that if you're getting older, you're losing your hearing? Or? No, no, no. It's because now I will be telling people. I mean, everyone knows that I'm losing my hearing if I'm in a public place because I keep saying what. Yeah. Whereas now there will be a little signal, although it is just a tiny little clear plastic pipe. I thought yeah. you just lo- lost your 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 hearing when you when it was your round. Uh, <laughs> there's a little bit of a reality check. The guy and, and he wasn't sales pitching me, but he did say as you get older and if you suddenly are a lot older and then start using your brain has stopped computing mm. uh, all this audible uh, information. So he said as soon as you start using them, it will keep your brain used to trying to translate whatever those signals are coming in. And he said, even if you're, if you're a lot older and you even start using it, he said, sometimes people won't really hear because they've lost that ability. So it's, it's going to get harder and harder. That's the bit. And everyone knows that's the bit, isn't it? It's... See, that's the difference. I mean, my hair's slightly longer than yours, so you can, my, like, it would get the hidden, so I wouldn't be so concerned I'm about growing it. mine again, yes. just so I can get yeah. old men to cross yeah. the road with me, and <laughs> I'll hear them creeping up behind <laughs> my new super hearing aids. Oh, I love. Uh, Steve Best. Well, moment of the month. Moment, I, I um, went to see some Shakespeare. <gasps> oh, uh, name me. Uh, Shakespeare <laughs> at the Globe, which is in London. Um, Ooh, lovely. I love the Globe. Have you, yeah, it's great. I, I haven't been there for a while, but I took my daughter, who's eight, and um, we didn't. Under, it was a comedy of errors, which is um, I, I hadn't much. I hadn't read it before, to be honest. But it's fran- it's so funny. It's really a fantastic play. But when we were watching, because at the beginning you don't know what's kind of really going on. And for an eight-year-old, she got quite bored. Uh, and then uh, about 20 minutes into it, she loved it. But the, the, there was a signer, a sign uh, interpreter there, and she was standing at the, on the stage. We are on the side, and there's a deaf person next to me on the left. So she, she was seeing the back of the signer. So she couldn't un- understand what was going on. So, um, Did you interpret for I tried to interpret before, yeah, because mm-hmm. I understood Shakespeare now. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but in the interval, I think that they had a word and they moved with someone in an obviously more expensive seat. So I, I don't know what was going on there, whether um, when she booked it... Yeah. Um, it doesn't make sense to me, because normally if you tell the theatre that you're deaf, or if you say you're going to use an interpreter... They have certain they, seats yeah. placed in front of the interpreter. So do you think she didn't tell them? Or as he's, uh, or maybe that you know, there's a, maybe that was the only one that they, that was being interpreted for, an, and that's all she could go to, and that's all the seat that was left. I don't know. I'm not too sure. It was a bit strange. I must admit because she just saw the back of her head. She had a tattoo on her neck. And what's the comedy out on this one? There's no comedy out on that. Oh, okay. The comedy, nice, the, nice. The, the, no one understood the play. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the comedy of error. The comedy of errors, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, the centre of the globe is uh, theatre, is where you all stand, isn't it? It's yeah. just a yeah. standing bit. Oh. Uh, disabled people wheelchair users, brilliant. Uh-huh. You just don't have to sit down. We're the only ones who can sit down. All these other Muppets have to stand up. Uh, have uh, you got anything else? Well, no, Best? the other one was it was your, it was your house. He's Simon's. You've been to Simon's place, and yes. and and, uh, and you've you've kind of modified your apartment to to. To, um... Yeah, I just want to clarify that, because it's not 
if you went in there and you didn't know I was short, no. would you, besides the eye Step hole, uh, yeah, you... I have a two peep hole, so is that right? Not <laughs> 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 uh, one is one's to my neighbour, they don't know about that, <laughs> and then the other one is on my front door. Yes, <laughs> if you have a peek hole as a little person, and when they come to the front door, they you're just, you peep through the hole and you're just looking at somebody's crotch. No, uh, I thought that, and I did wonder that, and it, it enlarges it as well, yeah, it's a know. horrible, horrible <laughs> sight. <laughs> no, they're really clever, they're, they're fish eyes, aren't they? So they... Mm. It's a really wide. You can go quite high. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. But otherwise, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know. Except your bed. I'm not. I've slept in it, but it because I couldn't because it, that's shorter as well, isn't it? So if you came into your apartment, yes, that was a very conscious. Cho- this is really going somewhere. Isn't it? <laughs> Several years ago, in my previous flat, I had a really tiny bedroom, and I thought, well, I don't need a big bed, as in an average size bed. So I got a ba- bed made for me, which was four foot six long, as well as whatever the width will be. But I do remember at that point thinking. This is really going to limit my opportunities if ever I want to go out with someone. Yeah, I was just thinking what happens when She's going to sleep like diagonally. Yeah. Yeah. So do you like scrunching up? Do you like scrunching up? Isn't it? Yeah. Well, you, uh, but uh, yes. So, yeah, yeah. They, so you've got a tap Thanks as well. You've got to mix well. it. That's all right. I've got to, you've got to mix a tap so, so uh, when it's off cold, you can't actually reach it. So, so uh, you keep it kind of three quarter of the way off when it's off. You th- can, am I not explaining this very no, well? I understand. When you push push it to cold, it's right by the wall. Yeah. So therefore, I can't reach it. Yeah. But I didn't know that. And you, you know, had a, you had a go at me for leaving. Like, and you said your parents do that, and everybody else does that. Um, yeah, squiggles. everyone who visits does yeah. that. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm being a bit harsh. I should have laughed like the crayon guy, the crayon <laughs> restaurant guy. But uh, I think I wasn't that no, angry, anyway. but it was just one of those... When it's your it's, own house. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, it's so obvious if you put it... I mean, my parents will wash up and dry up, and then they'll put all of it in the top cupboards, as if I would constantly put things in the cupboards where I can't reach it and obviously constantly climb. It's just a little thought process. But then, yeah, the fact that we've known each other 30 years, there's mm. no reason why you should consider... You mean? That means you'll never have cold water, completely cold water, because it'll always be three quarters. I think, yeah, that's the best of everything, because I hate freezing cold water on my hands. I have a, a water jug filter, so I fill it up with lukewarm water, which is I can reach and then put it in the fridge. Can you leave? Well, just along the same lines about that, I yeah, was staying in a hotel in Sheffield this weekend. I stay in a hotel all great, uh, a lot of time. I spend a lot of time in hotels. And I put the Do Not Disturb sign on, and typically it's like I go into my hotel room, I make it all dwarf accessible, move stuff around, get them to lower the shower head. Uh, in this particular case, I took the chair that they had this really weird, uh, like a desk type chair on wheels in front of the desk, but I rolled it over to the other side on the other side of the bed, and the bed was at a weird angle. And I had to, like, push it between the bed and the desk and get it off to the side. And, you know, obviously I got the towels down low and, you know, basically uh, pulled the, sh- yanked the sheets and the duvet from, you know, being tucked in too tight. The next, I mean, I had the Do Not Disturb sign out and I had to go out and do something the next morning. Um, and uh, I come back in. And my, I noticed the sign's not on the door, and I go in, and the room's completely made again, and the de- the chair's there, and the thing, and I was just like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, it took me 15 minutes to put everything yeah. back, and I was so pissed off. I was just like, okay, obviously, if I put the chair on the other side of the room, and like, you know, and uh, put, you got to know that there's somebody in a wheelchair in here, if everything's down low, and there's pictures of me, my DVD's sitting out, and there's sticks, and I got you like, Court of the bed as well to make yes. it, the bed smaller. Oh, it's just it's, just it's exhausting. Yeah, but you, so you put the do not disturb sign on, not because you're sleeping, out. but to make sure they don't make up your room. Yeah. And I, but I think there is a routine that the, whoever's cleaning the rooms, they have their six things that they do, and they just go bum bum yeah. bum bum bum. I was in France two weeks ago. Oh bonjour. And a wee wee, and I was with my mate who is French speaking and English speaking, and we went up to the Easy Jet. Am I allowed to see Easy Jet? Oh, it's um, another airplane every yeah, week. Lawrence yeah. Clark's going to write into us, isn't he? We always have an air story. Um, up to the counter, and Emmeline and I were speaking in English. So I zipped in and I got in way before check cut off. You know, check in time cut off, and I already knew I had called ahead about the scooter and situation. So I'm, you know, the woman sort of started to panic. I went to the special services counter, and she panicked a little bit, and then she was like, "I got to go find the paperwork," and she took forever and. Uh, this is after me having to wait for her to 
uh, sort out some people that were clearly non disabled. Um, anyway, then she gets on the phone. I, I, so I say, let me take the paperwork. I'll just check off this stuff because I've already been through this. Da-da. So she rings whoever she needs to talk to about my mobility scooter. And I, of course, I don't know what's going on at this point. My friend Emmeline tells me this a little later after we leave. Apparently, she says on the phone in French, that A, I was late, which we weren't, and B, she doesn't like dealing with these type of people. Oh, that's great. Cool. Oh, that yeah. Canadian. Yes. <laughs> Ginger. <laughs> Ginger Canadian dwarves. The worst. Um, and Emmeline, of course, didn't say anything at first. And then the lady was trying to explain to me about, you know, where to go with the mobility scooter. And she was kind of trying to find her English words. And Emmeline said, no, no, you can speak in French because I understand what you're saying. And the woman's eyes just went like, Gook. Nice. And, uh, yeah, so I started tweeting to EasyJet. And uh, they were like, we need to follow up on this. I'm like, oh, yeah, you do. Did they? Did they get? They got you on and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was no problem. I mean, pff, was there yeah. plenty of time. No, but yeah. she was being quite rude about it, and uh, yeah, EasyJet was like, "Oh, we'll follow up. We'll see." Yeah. And know. presumably, I mean, while you're waiting, they didn't even consider, you know, colour and book and crowns to get you. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. That's rude. poor customer service, isn't it? Right. Thank you, everybody, for your moments of the month. Uh, we're going to have a little break, and then we're going to look at our product reviews. <laughs> So, Tanya Lee and Juliet, you are both given an item, and we've asked you here to talk about it. So, first up is Juliet. It's a self-stirring mug, that's what it is. Self-stirring mug. And then I'll give you the proper description after you've told me what you think about it. Okay. Um, So, shall I describe what it's it's like? Okay, so, um, the self-stirring mug, which I have neglected to bring in today because I'm on top of my game. No, um, just because I was travelling around and train delays and stuff. But... um, (laughs) Blaming the train delays for everything. It's a plastic, I think it's made of plastic, um, grey uh, mug. It's recognisable as a mug. It's got a, kind of a hole in the bottom. And then there's this other part to it, which I had to put batteries in. I actually opened the instruction leaflet and read it, which I never normally do. Um, put the batteries in and then you you twist the battery part, base, the battery base, into the um, the bottom, this hole of the bottom of the mug. And therefore, this little thing, this little propeller pokes through the bottom of the mug. And um, and then, yeah, when you, you, you put, put your tea bag in and then you, or your soup, whatever it is, put your tea bag in, um, then put your, your water in, then you put your milk in. And instead of stirring with a spoon, because that's a lot of effort and causes so much <laughs> washing up, um, you press a little button on the base where the batteries are. The propeller whizzes round at the bottom and this little, um, it kind of creates a whirlpool. And it stirs, stirs fine and... Yeah. Did it chew up the tea bag? No, I took the tea bag out. Okay. Did actually take the tea bag out. But that's an interesting point then, isn't it? Because that that's, I mean, the... the, the the, here's a description. It's a self-stirring mm-hmm. mug, great for soup, hot chocolate or coffee. It's battery-operated and power stirs your beverage to avoid any residue as you finish the drink. And it's great for anyone with limited dexterity. So that's what it, that's who it's for, really. Um, so the tea bag is an issue, isn't it? If well, They don't talk about tea, do they? Hot chocolate ah, soup. Ah, that's clever. Ah. <laughs> or coffee where you but, put granules. Presumably you don't stir it with a tea bag. You just take the tea bag out. Yes, but and if then you've you got li- stir in the milk and the sugar. Yeah. Yeah, that's the stirring part. But then if you've got limited dexterity, the whole point... Of, of that is you wouldn't you know you've got to use a spoon yeah, to take the tea bag. Yeah, out. good point. Good point. Now you know what it is, and you've had it, and you've used it. Uh, can you think of anything you would change about it? Is yes. Any... Oh, okay. Um, I for one, I thought it worked fabulously. It was it was fine. Yep. It looked ugly. It, okay. It was just a grey lump of plastic, and it just could have been a bit more, I don't know, just a different, a brighter colour, a happier colour, I don't know. We need to check, because sometimes they, they send us one colour, but there could be a whole range of them, so Maybe we'll have to check are. on... Really the idea of having stuff. a design on it would be quite nice as well. I don't think they do that, but that's another thing. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe maybe yeah. stir it up. Maybe yeah. Steve, oh. Steve and Simon's faces would be great, I think. You guys that got behind it. We don't actually produce these. <laughs> <laughs> we just yeah, but I just think out. your faces on more things would be a good idea. Well, there we go. Um, she's our PR I know, person. I'm, I'm, you're, you're, hired. <laughs> you're hired. Let's get your faces out there. Um, now to butter up the host. Is, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to compliments. That's another thing from the Be Real campaign is to compliment yeah, yeah, people. Yeah. Uh, I also think it needs to be bigger because oh. it wasn't. It didn't actually hold a lot of 
liquids and if especially if you're going to have soup or if if you're going to make anything if you're going to go not forget about limited dexterity if any of us are going to go to the bother of making anything we need to have a, a big receptacle so that we can really enjoy it that's the us style isn't it mm, get bigger it the better baby bucket style <laughs> um uh, uh, and so i suppose it wasn't useful for you because you wouldn't need something like that but it was novel and it was nice um i do actually have already a self-stirring mug stop it i don't get out of here i know um it was given as a kind of joke present um but uh i actually have to say that one is bigger oh um i can't remember the name of the actual the actual where it's from or who made it so it's but it's a rival i don't think it's main i don't think it's meant for people with limited dexterity i think it's it was just a fun i think it's called typhoon mug you know. I'm asking. I mean, when I heard about the idea of a self-stirring mug, and as as you say, I'm sure people with their limited dexterity would benefit. I just thought this was such a cool idea, and, it's funky. and I think it's a great kind of idea you give someone as a present because it's so different. But you're saying there's at least two manufacturers now. Yeah, and the other one that we have already um, is is a bigger, chunkier, and it's got a bigger handle as well. This one was quite a dainty little handle. So I don't know whether that would be uh, having... I don't know many people with limited dexterity, but I don't know if the, the handle itself needs to be considered. That's good, but that also goes back to if it's a really big mug, could someone carry it? There's, I suppose if they've got two, they can choose what suits them better. That's the whole point. Yeah, if it's bigger, you could, and a, and you a main could wash, wash your feet in it, <laughs> wouldn't you? And uh, it costs £14.99. Does that sound right? Um, I Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to pay that for a mug, but I can see how it would cost that much. Yeah. But you, you can't, I mean, you can get nice mugs for four, four, fourteen ninety. I know, proper mugs, you know, you'd pay that for a mug. I was just laughing at how BBC that sounded. That was, you know, I can see <laughs> this point of view. I was an ex-BBC broadcast journalist, so... You're allowed to be... Yeah, okay. You're trying uh, to get a BBC Balanced. Show. The, th- the thing that's sad, though, I, if someone gave me that out of the blue and I'd never heard of it, the, the, but there was not that a moment of joy because you went, oh, I know what this is, I've got one. <laughs> yes. I, it was also, I think it might be more joyful if it were more pretty, maybe. OK, that's mm. the other bit. But talk back to appearances again. And a quick rate out of 10. Uh, Juliet, out of 10. Out of 10. Um, I'd say a solid seven. Good, good. Tanya Lee? <laughs> that, I don't just have the, one. The description. I'm lazy. Yeah. Bring it on. Okay. Eight, what? nine. Sure. Great. Eight, <laughs> nine. We'll give it eight and a half from you, Simon. Uh, yeah, just the principle of it. it just sounds cool to me. So I'm I'm up in the eights. Yeah, I'll, I'll go seven. I think with Juliet. Oh, yeah. Modest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's something. Quite well. Yeah. Okay. So Tanya Lee, you yes. did a little recording of when you first were given this product. So let's have a, a listen to that now. So this is some sort of like. It, Oh gosh, it's like a it's like a stick, and uh, or a, it's a, about the length of a pen maybe with all these kind of bulbousy things along it, some sort of weird anal beads. Except for when you turn it on one side, it looks like it might have a whistle on one end, but then it turns out it's a clamp. So I don't know. You can pinch your own nose. I don't. Yeah, it's. It looks like like it's the gold color of like a Christmas ornament, but it's very light plastic. And uh, I guess you clamp it on, but I oh maybe it's to undo zippers or something. You almost sort of lost for words <laughs> for, for the first time in your life. I know. Are you, um, are you you got it in your hand now. Are you well, anything to add? Are you a bit, well, still a bit bemused? Yeah. Now I think it would be really good um, as a like a roach clip. <laughs> For, yes. We're going to smoke <laughs> weed or something because it's got a little clip they get, on the they end. Get hot, so yes, apparently. Yes. Pass. So someone with limited dexterity <laughs> right. could have the self stirring mug and you then clamp it on the end and then you can hold it. Yeah, it's got the long handle and there we go. Are you yeah. still moving to Colorado? Is that yeah. still in the plan? <laughs> or it's a nipple clamp. I was thinking it looks like go. a sex toy. There you go. Well, that but my first thing was an anal bead stick. There you go. So for those listeners who have got all sorts of things going on in their heads right yeah. now, uh, let it's, me explain it to you. Um, it's actually called a bracelet buddy. Uh, it acts like the third hand that you need when you're fastening a bracelet. Uh, it. I've always wanted one of them. Oh, we go. got the products the wrong way around this month. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, yeah, so it, it should be able to hold it. Can you leave? This is, yeah, I don't have a clue how you do this. Well, okay, first of all, let me explain the fact that I have, I'm a diastrophic dwarf, which means my fingers are very short and they don't bend very well. So I have very limited dis- dexterity. So a, Limited dexterity? That was the mark. <laughs> I know. 
But it's just like I can't. Um, yeah. I, but the way I'm watching you now, it's almost like you have you, your bracelet you've got on. You said is elasticated. Yeah. See, that's why. The, yeah. Ding ding ding. No. Nice. So but you're trying to put the other one on without using the. Okay, the but I don't even know where to go. I don't <laughs> have know you ever put a bracelet on before? Well, yourself? so this is how what I would do this without the stick. I would put this in my mouth probably, like, and open it because my issue is I can't open that little doohickey thing. Right? The clasp. Just to let you know the we're on the radio. Clasp, yeah. The little clasp thing, I can't, it's hard for me to actually pop it open. So to, if I was to get it open and then try to get it around my wrist at the same time. So that little buddy thing is not going to help me at all. But, I'm just wondering, so when you're out, perhaps you need to sort of, when next time you want to put a bracelet on, just go outside the station and wait for someone to come along and start there, putting it on for you. Go, go. Thank you very that much. Yeah, That'll so I can your... find a lot more uses for the bracelet buddy then bracelets. The original one. So uh, it's uh, a roach buddy. <laughs> I'm going to come back to you, but as Juliet was so excited, should we yeah, pass it over and see if Juliet can actually... Yeah. Oh, Juliet's be beside She's herself. Uh, dexterity, uh, but maybe still needs help with the clasp. It's, well, it's something that every every woman I know struggles with, is putting these on. And I'm and I'm double-jointed, so when it comes to dexterity, like I, I can bend oh, backwards. And, I know, I'm bending Your my fingers, fingers backwards. Oh, yeah. thanks for that. See, you're the complete opposite. I can only do that and you, that I can't bend at all except for one knuckle and you can bend yours all the way back. Oh, that is... It's not, it's not the, oh, I can, it's, it, you come to get arthritis at an early age and I haven't done that. Right, we're going to give this a go. I'm going to do this. I don't know how. So, uh, talk, talk, talk. just describe, oh, no, I think it's, I'm trying to. It's, so it's a little. No, but I think, Juliet, you're using your spare. I would use that. that. I'd yeah, put the clasp in your fixed hand to hold the clasp so in place. So you're saying do it one handed? Or are you saying, no, do it. Right, got if, you. If the clasp holds it in place, then you've got your free hand to. <gasps> like that. Yes. You see, I'm itching to help you, but that sort of interfere, that defeats the whole point. Oh, 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 this is amazing. <laughs> Look at that. And we're not using it as a sex toy. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. <laughs> right? There you go. That's the big tip. Yep. <laughs> oh, hang on. No, I'm still struggling. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's holding the chain and then you just I'm do the clasp. I'm holding the chain. Yeah, because you've got to do the clasp. If this is magic, sure. isn't it? This is magic broadcasting. Oh. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I'm trying, okay, let's see. I'm, I'm nearly, I'm nearly getting the clasp into the, the ring. It's there. It's there. We've got clasp ring, clasp ring hang on. holdage. Yay, so, we have contact. Uh, One more. Well done. The bracelet buddy, yeah. you put the brace, the bracelet buddy is Used in the hand which you're putting the bracelet on to hold it in place, and then your free hand. And yeah. Tanya Lee's just fascinated by the whole bracelet putting but on I, thing. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm in, in admiration. If we'd got given you the self stone mug yeah, and Juliet, well, this we would have got some really happy bunnies. Market. But if I use, I'm still going back to if I could use it for many other things. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very pretty. Well, no one's stopping you, Tanya. It still looks like a nice little pipe. Uh, so, either of you, uh, if we were to tweak it to change it, any improvements? Don't give it to me. <laughs> okay, that's one. <laughs> but uh, it yeah, apparently it works because uh, I mean, my, my I, it kind of um, the color is quite. It's mm. very brush gold. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, the Christmas ornament mention yeah. thing. That's it's, quite. It's very plasticky as well, yeah, but very, but yeah. the, I don't know if that's because it's lighter and it's easier to mm. to use. Does but... it need to be so glamour glamorous? I mean, for, don't get me wrong. I love glamour. I, is there a purpose for the glamour? So ironically, we want this to be in grey, where we want the mug. <laughs> we want the mug to be gold. Yeah, that's a bit back here. to front this, week, yeah. this month. Mm. Uh, so uh, not terribly useful for you, no. Tanya Lee. However, Julia, I'm I'm a little bit in love with it. I think it's on my Christmas list. That's fantastic. Mm. Uh, we love that when that happens. Um, if you were to buy it, it would cost you seven pounds. Uh, Christmas list. If we can rate it, Tanya Lee, you were first up with it out of ten. I like the I like the fact that it's bright and co- co- and it's got a little clasp or like the little roach. Clip. You can rate it for whatever uh, you're going to use it for. Okay. Perhaps. Oh well, I'll give it a four. Four? You're yeah. not going to use it that much. No. Okay, uh, mm. Juliet. I would I would give it a nine. <laughs> See best. Well, the, if Juliet's saying it's good, for, uh, you'd have to go with the, what it's made for. So you'd have to give it a good score if it works for people. Simon. Ah. Uh. I, because I just like the self stirring mug a bit more, uh, I'm going to give it six, I think, although I do appreciate it's You could actually stir people. with this, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you see. Huh? And then you get gold flakes and... Glamorous tea and glamorous soup. Okay. <laughs> and you could clip your tea bag on the end of it and stir the tea bag. Well, I, I haven't really added up these scores very well, but Tanya Lee giving it four has made, I think, the self-stirring mug wins. Yeah. Although there's no real winner, is there? All winners. 
Yeah, <laughs> and confidence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Thank you to our guests for uh, Julia and Tanya Lee for reviewing that. We are going to have a very, very tiny break, and probably Tanya Lee can show us what she can actually really do with that in the break. <laughs> That's impressive, Tanya Lee. I would have never dreamed of doing that. But um, okay, <laughs> get it out, get it out, pull it out. <laughs> what, what are you? Uh, what are you up to? Where, where can people see you or find out about well, you? If you want my schedule, it's at Tanya Lee Davis, T A N Y A L E E D A V I S uh, dot com. And I in November I'll be through North America. I'm in Florida for a couple of weeks, and then I'm back in the UK in December for for a couple of weeks for Christmas shows. Just, yeah, basically, just all over doing stand-up comedy shows. Busy stuff. And they can yeah. find out on your website. Yes. Uh, lovely. Thank you, Juliet. Uh, I, uh, if anyone wants to find out about me, they can go on to Juliet, J-U-L-I-E-T-E, Burton, B-U-R-T-O-N, dot co dot U-K. And, uh, yes, there's a list of performances on there, or they can uh, join me on Twitter, at Juliet Burton. And, yeah, I'm going to be um, in November, December, I'll be around the UK performing lots. Uh, next year, I've also got some dates lined up for the Brighton Fringe, for the Edinburgh Fringe already, um, and all kinds of random places that I'm being performing. I'm going to be performing up in Scotland as well. Um, and, yeah, just definitely... Definitely sign up to my newsletter as well because that's very that's the place that people can get to know the most about me. You're very good because you do send them out and write them. You're on my mailing list, aren't you? I am on your yeah, mailing list. I put you on my mailing list. <laughs> yes, I did remember thinking, how do I undersubscribe? I didn't. I thought, how lucky am I? Do you but blog, do you do blog do as well or is it like that's newsletter is your, your blog? I do it? have a little blog which, to be honest, a lot of the time it's just taken from my Facebook pe- uh, professional page. Okay. I'm just kind of putting that on to, into the blog. But the blog's on my website and um, but people can sign up to my newsletter. In the newsletter you get to see all kinds of behind the scenes pictures and things from me running around performing and um, and that's quite entertaining. At least my mum thinks so. That is marvellous. Uh, thank you very much, both of you, Tanley Davis and Julia Burton. Thank, thank you very much. You. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Now, competition time. We're going to offer each of today's items as its own prize, so to win you need to drop us an email or text message and we'll put all the entries into a hat and draw out a winner. Please state if you'd rather have the self-stirring mug or the bracelet, buddy. So we've tweaked the competition now. You don't actually have to say why you want it. Just drop us a line and you'll go in the hat and you could be lucky, but do tell us which one you want. All of that information is on our website, abnormallyfunnypeople.com, or you can leave a voicemail or send us a text on our telephone number, which is 07756 190561. Unfortunately, at this point, we can only send the prizes to people in the UK, and the closing date for this month's competition is Sunday the 16th of November. Transcript of this podcast will be up on our website too. Thank you, as always, to Really Useful Stuff, who supplied the items. You can check out what they do via their website, reallyuselstuff.co. Thank you to our guests again, Tanya Lee and Juliet, and also to our fantastic producer, Anne. And thank you all for listening.